When the father came, he saw his friend and sister in the grave and their tongue. He shouldn't have see things you are away. Try to understand your best friend. Love their person and feel the bright light which is in heaven. A second form is someone I love. I lost someone special. Ever since then, I fell into tears. The tears would dry up, but I still, I still lost someone special. Every night, I pray the tears will come back. What should I do to make the pain stop? Nothing. It hurts too much to forget. That's why the tears keep coming back. Smile with tears stop because I knew she was in a better place. I tried to forget, but still I lost someone special. <laughs> My soul is power, especially every hour. It goes up and down, even when we are not around. A soul is a great, a soul is great, and you don't want to be late. Stay alive, and you will rise. Every time I'm asleep, my soul weeps. A soul is clear, and I'm near. Stay alive, and don't forget you will rise. I have a special sister. Some people think we are twins. But the wind still blows. Sometimes we fight, sometimes we both are frightened. We speak to each other, and sometimes we don't. We are both loved and hugged. We talk about things we both, we both sing. We play together, but we would rather help each other. We stay away doing bad things, and when we go through bad things, a special sister is never forgotten. <laughs> The, 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 the human voice, the, the idea of presenting in poetic form is one of the most ancient traditions of all people. The bards of Europe, the griots of Africa, the Asian poets, the Latino poets. For centuries, since we have been civilized uh, communities, have often, uh, have always actually and use poetry as a means to inform people, to, to influence people, to think, to act in ways that makes our societies move forward. And just really, uh, just so appreciative of all this talent we have here at Camden High. Um, is Melissa Thomas here? No, but I'll read. Okay, so you're going to read for Melissa? Okay, this is another poet, and uh, really I'd like to thank Ms. Dallas for that uh, let's give her another hand. And you can see she spit them out, just one after the other. Uh, these are prolific writers, and hopefully we're going to be seeing these, their books one day. Uh, we'll be paying to see these people, so right now, uh, count this off with luck.
then you will see. We were meant to be together, but you chose to go astray. But it doesn't bother me much. I'll just go on anyway. Thank you very much, sir. That was Tiffany Bates reading for Melissa Thomas. You know, Melissa wrote one poem, I think, in the last issue of the Castle Cry that began with uh, words to this effect. I'm laying down, but before I do, I'm going to bed, that is, and uh, she said, I just need to say a few words. And out comes this, like, uh, long poem uh, just before she lays her head down. So um, these people are truly gifted, and they have a lot of... Uh, reserved in terms of uh, spiritual uh, stimulation and uh, we're just uh, again you know so uh, fortunate to be able to listen to these folks. Uh, is Ziamara Rivera here? Ziamara? Uh, is anyone reading for Ziamara? Juan Rivera is one. Okay, okay. Um, Juan, thank you. Juan Vergara uh, reading for Ziamara Rivera. And while he's getting set up here, uh, we would just like to encourage others to uh, put your ideas down in writing, free form, formal, uh, uh, a structure. It all counts. If you have it, use it. Spanish and in English, so I'm reading in both. It's called February, February the 14th, El 14 de Febrero. <coughs> Espero que este día pienses en las cosas felices. I hope on this day you think of wonderful thoughts. Y te alegre hoy y todos los días. I hope that joy fills your heart on this day and on the day to come. Y esperamente en el 14 de febrero de cada año. And especially the 14th of February of every year. It's the day that celebrates the love of one's sacrificial hecho por el amor. It's the day one. It's one day out of the entire year that we celebrate the sacrifice we made for love. Se atrae a alguien al mundo, bringing a beautiful life into the world. Amar a lo imposible, loving the ones that are impossible to love. Callar un amor si quieres que todos lo sepan. Keeping the love a secret even though you want the world to know. Or you want someone who loves someone else. Or loving someone that loves someone else. You suffer for the pain of them. You suffer the pain. Recordar un ser querido. Of remembering a loved one. Una vez más se apaga el amor. Once again the love dies. Y surge la amistad. The friendship lives. Tu eres mi amado. You are my love. Y yo tu amiga. And I am your friend. Thank you very much, Juan. Um, <clears throat> Leslie Hubbard, it's Leslie here. Is anyone reading for Leslie? Miss um, Peterson? Did you, are you ready? Or we'll, okay. All right, then. We'll move now to um, Miss Tiffany Bates is coming forward here, another powerful poet who has just read for Melissa Thomas. Tiffany. My first poem is The Rose in the Weed. Every day I stand and wonder, why did the Lord put me here? Yes, I'm the weed and not the rose. You see, I'm like the rose, the weed can get stepped on, walked on, and sometimes even cut down. But no matter what, it always continues to grow and grow. The rose may talk about the weed being ugly, but yet and still, it's my dignity that gets the props for being powerful. And the rose talks about being higher than me. Well, if you bring yourself to my territory, you'll be in your lowest line of glories. Because if you get out of place and step your bounds in my fields, believe me, you won't be needing a rose, only a weed. You see, you try to take away my self-dignity and destroy my unity. But believe me, if you walk a day in my shoes and see how many people suffer from the pain of losing a loved one, or see how many kids can't look forward to another day because their moms don't crack, or see how kids are getting killed from child abuse, you see, you don't know me because of the way I act. You see, 
Don't doubt me because of the way I act or the way I look. Because until you walk your day in my shoes, you don't know about self-dignity. All you know is destroying the unity. You tried to take away my pride, but I won't hide. Remember, no matter how hard you destroy me, I always continue to grow better than you. And believe me, in time, I own your little rose vine. Who are you to tell me I'm less than you? You have no right to down me for my wrongs and bring me back up on my rights. Why do people always down me instead of trying to see my true personality? Every day, people down me, and never once do they stop to think that maybe I like being me. The second one is especially for Miss Crawley. Ready or not? Every day, I try to make it through, never realizing that he gave all he could give. Then they claimed the devil was the boss, making everyone go crazy and insane. They had nothing to gain. The game we all have played once in our lives is now a living nightmare. Do you remember the game hide and seek? Do you remember counting while your friends hid from you? Then you yelled out, ready or not, here I come. The Lord plays in mysterious ways, and still you don't know if this could be your last day. Taking each day one step at a time, feeling like this may be your last day for you to spend your last time. Just please remember, ready or not, he will come. He's counting down, not wearing a crown, because ready or not, here he comes. That, my friend, means your time is finally up. You'll be able to live with him in heaven's gate, but please try not to be late. Okay, the next one is the little things in life. Dear Lord, I am flat broke from overspending at Christmas time, but I need to go shopping again real soon. self-righteousness for an equal amount of humanity. I hear it is less expensive and it wears better too. And while I'm at it, I'm going to check on tolerance to see if they have any available for my size. I remember to try to match my pastry with the little I have left. My neighbor is loaded with it and it looks awfully good on her. I was told the same department has a repair shop for mending integrity. Mine has become frayed around the edges, around the edges from too many shortcuts too much compromise, and if I don't get it refurbished soon, there won't be any left. I almost forgot the most important thing of all, compassion. Love is not the best thing for me, but believe me, if they have any in my side, I'm going to stock up heavily regardless of the price. I ran out of it so many times, and I always feel ashamed when it happens, like I'm the one to blame. I don't know why it has taken me so long to get around to shopping for these items. They don't cost nearly as much as the frivolous things. I brought on impulse, and I'm sure to get a lot more satisfaction from them. Yes, I am going shopping today, and I can leave my credit cards and checkbooks at home. The things I'm looking for have no price tags at all. And the last one I'm going to read for now is Failure of My Lifetime. This, my friends, is a story of my life. You see, I am a failure, but at one point in my lifetime, my family thought the world of me. Nowadays, I just don't know what my life has come to be. Remember the days when I asked Daddy for that piggyback ride. However, to see myself, I'd rather die. Yes, I'm ashamed, and yes, I know I'm to blame. I may not argue and say I may argue and say things that I really don't mean, but it's only because I need love like those to an optimistic thing. Thinking of those days when you said I was your little girl, but to sit and argue constantly, I'd rather be left alone. Constantly making me feel ashamed, feeling like a wild animal that cannot be tamed. I'm not at all that bad. I really wish I could have what I had before. Never to feel like I'm being shoved out your front door. Soon I'll be old enough to be out on my own. Just remember, no matter what, I'll pick up the phone. Could you ever love me like you did before? Or could you allow me to walk out of the door? I want so much to prove to you that I can be your little girl once again, but only if you give me half a chance. Um, thank you very much, uh, Tiffany. I just think that uh, some of these poems, these poets speak for the masses. These poets, they, 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 they I'm sure we can identify with these, these lines of uh, feeling that are actually put on paper and they come through the human voice. 
and certainly it can inspire us all to walk through life with more commitment to do exactly what uh, Tiffany said, uh, progress and, and make parents proud of us in all aspects of our, our endeavors. Uh, we're going to have um, Latina Rand now who will read for Leslie Hubbard and then um, Ms. Peterson I think will read one for Sheena Johnson. Thank you, Tina. <coughs> Leslie Hubbard's poem is entitled, Our Love. Our love is like a sea, so vast that we cannot see the shore. Our love is like a port at last we've been searching for. Our love is like a ship that sails on love's uncharted sea. Our love is like a sea, so vast, and my love for you will always last. Come here, come here, come sweet love, the golden morning breaks. All the earth, all the air of love and pleasure speak. Teach my arms to embrace, and sweet lips to kiss, and mix our souls in mutual bliss. Thank you. Thank you, Latina. You've seen a different rhythm. Some of them are, uh, are, are, are more bluesy, some of them are more upbeat. Just all kind of freeform stuff going on up here, and just appreciate the diversity of delivery, the diversity of uh, depth. Oh, it's all good. Okay, um, can we um, bring to the podium now uh, Juan Vergara uh, to read? Uh, I'm sorry, and then followed by Ms. Peterson doing Sheena Johnson's work, if that's okay. Juan Vergara, please. I've been very quiet the day my good friend died. I felt the pain and sorrow and power not to cry. I felt the silence fall like thunder to a train, like when the heavens closed and darkness fell upon me. I had been very quiet. I closed my watery eyes. I wondered how he really felt when he prayed he would die. The quiet times that lay ahead were days of solemnness. But had I known it, it would have been an honor to find him had been blessed. But in the coffin he lay now, so hard for me not to cry. He said his quiet time would come to not be so surprised. How could someone so full of life just turn his head and die? To leave a world where his loved ones were and never say goodbye. But now I know the meaning of life before death comes along. To live like to the fullest and not wait for eternity too long. The quiet times are not my days and I said no tears I'll shed. But late at night I remember a friend, the one alive not dead. So say he's my heart, don't cry, but cry why shouldn't I? When someone like a friend like you just suddenly didn't survive. He didn't rob a liquor store or commit some awful crime. He didn't stop craving, he gave everyone quiet time. This is called One Spring Day. 
I didn't like it, I just stand to beautiful to sleep. The grass is lush and cold at its touch. The pond was amazing, it's blue and it's deep, and it's deep. To all of these things meant life process, but to me it meant much. The trees were no longer golden, yet greener than the grass. The flowers were all, were all, were all shapes and sizes, colorful and into a bliss. The breath of spring had glazed the sky, and boys were in a mass. The smell of dew how sweet and strong, so something I have truly missed. The ants marched up and down these hills while bees fly rapidly. The butterflies home freely and gliding as if life was just for an hour. The wind felt warm upon my skin while smoothing through the mellow sky and glowing bright green trees. The west were unwelcome, yet they came. Their red was fierce as power. Amazing things to see today, amazing and truly great. One spring day seems never night, the kites, the kites fly endlessly in the velvet sky. As one young boy seeks trout and bass at a lake and uses fresh earth worms and bait. One spring day will soon come to children, but its memories are surely not done. It's about complex emotions. Another day has come to my attention. The sun has illuminated my space. Another endless tale has been told at such length and great pace. Another star is born today, the shimmer fluorescent in the moon. Another hero and heroine has shown a living courage. How image makes you bold. Another lover roams dangerously, not knowing it's missed his power. Another scandal awaits when feelings are aroused. Another complex emotion that one must feel an hour at a time. Another complex emotion that one must choose until, until time. Another person's blood flows deep and one must conquer jealousy. Another person sleeps without knowing the envy and deceit. Another child is born today, his face is white as snow. Another affair that lays sour and regret, but a left child shall never know. Another complex emotion, another day when we wait for all. Another lyric without words, another expression without a song. Another complex emotion, another and another. Before one problem or solution, we step over to the other. While hearing all these poems, I just feel like everything is so deep. Um, some of us taking me back to when I was your age, doing the same thing, sitting in our room, writing poetry or whatever. Um, just feel, got a chill from all this poetry. Um, I'm going to read two pieces by Sheena Johnson. One is called Brown Sugar Queen. Brown Sugar Queen is my name because my brown skin is, skin is so sweet. That's why when I walk up and down your street, I get judged from my head down to my feet. Black is that pretty, sophisticated honey hive that bees try to attack. But we beautiful black women have a special kind of honey that makes the bees hold back. When we step into a room, all men crowd around, adoring and praising us as if we were Pam Greer, Foxy Brown, Bill Kim, Faith Evans, Aaliyah, and Monica, brown sugar queens as you sit. You also have Kelly Price, Deborah Cox, SWV, and please don't forget you and me. I'm young but not restless, bold and beautiful are just the way I look. That's something that ought to make D'Angelo write a brown sugar book. Just like mates being black makes me feel so good. My race, my culture, I wouldn't change them if I could. Just like the woo, we have a variety of skin tones such as French vanilla, butter pecan, chocolate deluxe, and caramel sundae. I'm black and I'm proud, just like James Brown is something I always say. When we pretty brown women talk, it's soft and sweet, just like a candy yam. I know I don't have to scream like Janet Jackson and Michael just to be seen. I am a humble queen, I am. You see, me and my girl, Erica, Erica, I'm sorry, Badu, can, can on and on into the next life. Time talking to Tyrone about the beauty of brown skin. You can also have the conversation if your African pride comes within. Just like Mary J. Blige, I'm up here sharing my world and my life, letting you know what's the 411 about being black. Black is soft and beautiful. Black is dark and lovely. Black is that rich complexion for a fact. I'm not just writing this poem so un under the title my name can be seen, but I'm writing it to let you know Latifah isn't the only queen. So if someone says your skin looks as if it's been dropped on top of Candyman, you tell them it's your face that gave you its so sweet complexion without getting a tan. <laughs> to say the same thing when I was 
Ms. Peterson is a poet. Okay. All right, we really need to showcase our talent more often. Um, before we continue, though, I would like to say, uh, Ms. Peterson, we should thank her for the uh, nice banner that you put up here. Our stu Welcome our student showcase. And um, I'd like to thank Ms. Still for helping to uh, provide the uh, arrangements here, as well as Mr. Muley for the technical support, Mr. Grosso for helping these poets to have a, for providing a venue for these, for these poets to show their stuff. And uh, just so appreciative, give them a hand, please. Okay. Um, <clears throat> probably getting near the end um, of our program today. And uh, we have uh, one poet who's not here, uh, Neridon Garcia. He's not here, but nonetheless, we do have um, Mr. Juan Vergara, who will uh, read for Neridon. So uh, Juan, again, please. Thank you. <coughs> in your life by Narodin Garcia. Day after day I've witnessed a beautiful butterfly suffering with so much pain, fear, and anger, like the world, himself, and everyone around him. Having nowhere to go without the guidance of her mother who is richer than diamond and as lovely as beautiful as a dove. Her heart is shattered like a thousand pieces, a ocean seashell. Her days are silent, not a wonder, not a laughter, not even a smile. Her pain hurts so much that it grows throughout her face and reflects on everything she does. She finds no means to go on. Beautiful butterfly must have faith to go on and share her joys and gifts with the world so that someday she'll be flying to heaven with her precious mother. She is much too young to give up now. She has to keep fighting and striving to conquer that overbearing thing. She has to know that, just like her mother, she is more precious and her two kids feel the same way about her. She has to keep climbing, not only for her kids and herself, but that's what her mother was involved with, to be strong and independent just like she was. Finding no means of help from anyone, she has to know that she's the leader of the family now. Whatever her family left behind, she must take over. She has to know that her heart and soul will be filled with love and the universe and happiness. This beautiful butterfly must fly to the sky with the same courage that her mother showed her. She must spread her wings, <coughs> and head high, and be protected. are what these poems are talking about. If I could say what the, it seems to me that the, the, the continuity of uh, ideas coming through all of these poems is that I am somebody. I want something in life. I can do it. Don't judge me by whatever stereotypes exist in society. And that's powerful. That those ideas that are reflected in all of these poems. Uh, we have um, another poet here, uh, Miss Jennifer Martinez, and she could come forward and deliver also some of this precious jewels here. Miss Martinez. Why is a famous question you can't answer? 
Now you left me here with nothing but anger. Why is the question that brings hatred and regret? So if you don't want the feeling of pain, think with your head. Don't ask why. Thank you. something like a, a kind of um, down-home style, you know, uh, wealthy mean kind of thing. For those of us who are in those kind of settings on Sunday mornings, you know, at one point they said, uh, would anybody like to join the church? So uh, I'd like to ask, are there any poets in the house who have any some of this dynamite poetry just under the cover that would like to read? Um, young lady in the back, I see her friends pointing to her, uh, and I don't know her name, but uh, would you like to read and help us uh, celebrate all of this talent? Come on for us. Can I go at the end of my head? Can I go at the end of my head? Okay, well, this is me or that. This is me or that point. Oh, you're trying to set it together? I'm trying. Let uh, Tiffany has one more to do. Uh, Tiffany? Oh. Okay. Tiffany. Thank you. Okay, here we go uh, with um, Tiffany Bates again. Thank you. This is a poem that I wrote for my cousin called Distant Love. We have grown so far apart because all you do is break my heart. You lie over and over again, putting me through all this pain, hoping I can look forward to better days, but yet and still you always have to have your way. Constantly going through your little mood swings, beating and banging on me. Why can't you just let me be? Your hands strike me and the hurt is unbearable. Do you even see that you're not at all liable? Why will you hurt me in an abusive way? The punch in the face the other day hasn't made it easy to say that I don't want you around anymore, ready to get up and walk out of your door. We have a little girl that is only one. So have her look at you and cry. Daddy, please don't say goodbye. It's bad enough for me. But to sit and say that you're ready to walk away is not the best thing to hear when I'm constantly feeling the spirit. This one is entitled, If I Die Tonight. If I die tonight, would you cry? My love, I give you permission to move on and leave me in the past because now I'm born. If I die tonight, I don't want you to be depressed or get upset. I know you feel like this is the worst that things can be. If I die tonight, could you continue to love me for the rest of your life? If I die tonight, would you or would you lose a part of you? If I die tonight, would you close my eyes or would you look in there to see what could have been? If I die tonight, would you still love me or would you say that this just can't be? My love, if I die tonight, it will be all right. My soul, the Lord shall take, but my heart is all, will always remain with you. If I die tonight, please don't cry. Smile for me. Put a smile on your face because now I'm in a better place. The next one is entitled Hate Me Now. Constantly dream on me, wishing you could be like me. Let me know what it is that you see that makes you want to hate on me. Thinking you're so much better, you can't probably even write a letter. You can hate me now, however, tomorrow's a new day. We'll see what you have to say. Smile in my face for a minute, talking behind my back for the next minute. And my business, why are you always in it? Why must you hate on me? Maybe it's jealousy or maybe it's this that you realize. You'll, ne you'll never be able to be like me. I tell you once again, you can hate me now, but I'm the one who feels like she's a fool. But, but you'll be the one in the end to feel like you're a fool.
Now I ask you to stay by my side and continue to love me for the rest of our lives. Believe me, I'll continue to love you forever, but only if you allow me to be a part of your world. <laughs> the last one is, don't you want to live no more? If I could die today, please, Lord, take me away. Why, Lord, do you constantly hold on to a failure that, is, that has nothing to show? Let me get smacked by a car if I could die today. And please, Lord, I beg you to take me away. I've done my time, so why am I still here? I have no fears, you know. You could take me off the hard way, shot in the head, and left for dead. If I die today, please let me feel the pain. I bet you so much in my lifetime. And believe me, I could take a little more. Uh, one of the things I think that in response to this uh, based, uh, uh, last poem there, all this pain that we suffer, one of the ways that we can, um, I think, alleviate some of that pain is by thinking about how we can overcome the obstacles, the issues that cause that pain. That cause that pain, those things that, that involve our, uh, our personal lives as well as our public lives. You have, you're the next generation to actually run society. And um, some of the things that it will take is you to organize, to have uh, improvement in our school systems, improvements in what our communities look like, improvements in what the housing in this city looks like. You can affect that change um, so that some of that pain can be alleviated because that's a lot where it comes from, you see. Uh, those issues that are unsatisfied employment, all of those issues, uh, certainly paying attention to those uh, as they're reflected in the poetry uh, will, will alleviate some of that pain, you see. I, I'd also like to acknowledge uh, Ms. Crawley, who's present here with us. Um, she is, uh, of course, as everyone knows, uh, the uh, drama um, instructor here at our school, and as part of the performing arts, uh, she has certainly uh, been one to help groom some of these poets, as Ms. Uh, Bates uh, has uh, attested to. So thank you, Ms. Crowley, also for your contribution. Um, we probably are nearing our um, the end of our session here. And I don't know if there are any more poets that uh, want to come to the floor. Uh, podium here to uh, read, but um, uh, Ms. Brown, uh, who is also here from uh, the Central Board of Education, she is in charge of our uh, reading. Um, yeah, so we do have one more poet, but be, uh, before uh, we, uh, she's getting herself together. And, Right. Uh, but Ms. Brown, would you like to come say a few words, please, for us? Ms. Brown, thank you for your presence coming to support these students. I want to say good morning to all of you, and I want to thank you for inviting me to come. I always am interested in anything that involves the uh, students here in Camden. That's what I'm about. And I have always said and told people that we have some of the brightest, most intelligent children here in Camden. And today I have witnessed some of that creativity and some of that uh, brightness and intelligence. So I just want you that are writing to keep it up and those that aren't writing maybe to perhaps try. And you have some wonderful, wonderful works and now is the time for you to begin to save those things, to begin to make what's called a portfolio and keep your poems together because later in life you might want to add to this and perhaps even make a book or publish a book of your poems. So continue to do it. And I have been deeply moved by some of the um, poems. So just keep it up and again thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Um, Ms. Crowley, uh, do you like to say anything? Or we just, okay, thank you. Uh, um, okay.
Okay, um, our final poet today um, is Miss Salima Johnson. She's going to come and read for us. Thank you. Thank you for 